A great circle is projection of a plane in a stereographic projection. The most important great circle in any stereographic projection is the primitive circle. It's the projection of the horizontal plane or the projection plane itself. The diameter of the primitive circle is another important great circle. It's a great circle of infinite radius and it represents a vertical plane. A more general inclined plane in a stereographic projection is represented by a great circle which passes through two diametrically opposite points of the primitive. So for example here in, shown in red is ABC, a great circle which is an inclined plane and it is passing through A and C which are diametrically, diametrically opposite points of the primitive. Now, any given plane has a plane normal. The plane projects as a great circle. The normal of the plane will project as a point in the stereographic projection. So suppose the normal of the plane ABC projects in the point N. Then the point N is called the pole of the great circle ABC. And in this video, we will try to see how to determine the location of the pole of a given great circle. So let us begin with the simplest case first. So we look at the primitive circle and try to find the pole of the primitive circle. As we saw, the primitive circle represents the horizontal plane. Thus, its normal is the vertical direction. And vertical direction, we know, projects as the center O of the primitive. So the center of the primitive itself is the pole of the primitive. The next simple case, let us look at a vertical plane represented by the diameter AB. And let us try to locate the pole of this great circle AB. To do this, we draw the perpendicular diameter CD. Then either of the endpoints of this diameter C or D represents the pole of AB. The justification for this is simple. Let us look at this endpoint C. C lying on the primitive is a horizontal direction and C is at 90 degree to A. So C is perpendicular to the direction A lying in the plane AB. And since C is a horizontal direction, it's necessarily perpendicular to the vertical direction O, the center of the primitive. So C is also perpendicular to the direction O lying in the plane AB. Thus, C is perpendicular to two directions, two independent directions A and O lying in the plane AB. And any vector perpendicular to two directions in a plane is perpendicular to all the directions in the plane. Thus, the direction C is perpendicular to all directions in the plane AB and thus is the plane normal. So C is the pole of AB. D is just the opposite of C and obviously is also one of the poles of AB. Let us now consider the most general case of the inclined plane. That is represented by the great circle ABC and we wish to determine the pole of ABC. To do this, we first draw the diameter AC. We have seen that any inclined plane great circle will always pass through two diametrically opposite points. In this case, these are A and C. And we draw the diameter AC. Then we draw the diameter perpendicular to AC and let us call that DE. This perpendicular diameter DE intersects the great circle ABC at the point M. Now, on the diameter DE, I will try to locate a point which is 90 degree away from M. Call that N. 
then n is the pole of great circle abc again we can justify this construction by seeing that since n is at 90 degree by construction we try to place n at 90 degree away from m so since n is at 90 degree away from m n is perpendicular to the direction m lying in the plane abc and since n lies on the diameter de diameter de contains all directions which are perpendicular to a thus n lying on de is also perpendicular to a so we see n is perpendicular to the direction m lying in the plane and n is also perpendicular to the direction a lying in the plane and thus n is perpendicular to all the directions lying in the plane and hence it's the plane normal so it is the pole of the great circle abc but how do we locate n how do we know what distance from m to put n such that the angle mn is 90 degree for this we have our familiar distance angle relationship of any pole from the center of the primitive so we look at that and we measure the distance mo and let us call that x now what angle m is from o that is encoded in this distance through the distance angle formula x is equal to r tan theta by 2 where theta is the angle of m from o so we can find this theta simply by inverting this relationship as 2 tan inverse x by r once we know this angle theta we can find the complementary angle phi 90 minus theta so if i now further travel a distance corresponding to phi on the other side then the total angle mn will become 90 degree and what is the distance corresponding to phi again we find that distance y by the angle formula y is equal to r tan phi by 2 so i go a distance y from o to find the pole n o n at a distance y from o so we we have determined the pole n of the great circle a b c there is another interesting geometrical way of doing this let us look at that so we want to locate a pole n which is at 90 degree away from m we join c to m to get a point on the primitive x cm is projected and it hits the great circle it hits the primitive at x and we locate that point x we join x to the center of the primitive and then so ox is a radius of the primitive we now draw another perpendicular radius of the primitive oy and then we join y to c such that it intersects de at the desired point n n is the pole of the great circle now the construction looks a little bit involved and complicated but the justification for this construction comes by rotating this primitive circle imagine that you are rotating this primitive circle about the diameter de by 90 degree so that the horizontal primitive now becomes a vertical plane of the reference circle and so it becomes the vertical plane of the reference circle it was horizontal plane initially it was coinciding with this horizontal plane now i have rotated it about de so that it has become a vertical plane so the point c which was in the horizontal plane has now come into the vertical plane and coincides with my south pole then you can see that now ox and oy are nothing but two directions in space which are at 90 degree 
and thus m and n are nothing but projection of these directions from the pole s so since the direction in space are at 90 degree their stereographic projection m and n are also at an angular separation of 90 degrees so n is a pole 90 degree away from m thank you very much